the 2019 rendition of Little Women is the latest adaptation from the famous book by Louisa May Alcott. And this comes to us from director Greta Gerwig and stars Saoirse Ronan, Emma Watson, Florence Pugh, Laura Dern, Timothy Chalamet, and the great Meryl Streep. Now, I must say, I was kind of skeptical about this movie coming into it, but I'll tell you what, it was a joy to watch, and I'm looking forward to talking about this on my next conservative take. My name is Kyle, and if you're unfamiliar with the way I do my movie reviews, please click the link above, and that will explain everything. And as always, we will leave an indicator for the spoiler section to my right, so you will be warned in case you don't want to know anything about the movie. So as I get into the story of Little Women, the 2019 version of it, I have to say up front, I knew nothing about this film. I knew nothing about the novel. I knew nothing about any of the adaptations of this at all. I just knew it was about women. <laughs> That's really all I knew. And so I was really had a lot of trepidation going into this film, I must say. However, coming out of it, I had a really good time. It was heartwarming. And so, because I don't know that much about the film and other adaptations, I'm going to give this review from my personal perspective, okay? This film deals with a family in the 1800s around the time of the Civil War. In fact, during the Civil War. And these four women, their names are Joe, Meg, Amy, and Beth. Their mother is Marmee. She's played by Laura Dern. Joe, the main character, is played by Saoirse Ronan. And... She is the writer of the group. And every sister has a special talent. Some of them can play the piano. Some of them are really good at art. Some of them can you know, write and so forth. And the mother, Laura Dern's character, Marmy, does a really good job of keeping them all together. Their personalities are very strong, a lot of them. And they fight and they do bad things to each other. But the mother says, look, we are sisters, we are, uh, you're my daughters, and as sisters, you need to make sure that you love each other regardless of what goes on. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. And so that was a nice touch there. So Meryl Streep plays a woman named Aunt March. She explains to them that there really is nothing they can do to make money for themselves. They're always dependent on men, and that's sort of what the deal is. And so the film goes back and forth into time. So it goes back into the time when they were kids and when they were older, like seven years apart. And it jumps back and forth from time. I don't know if the novel does that. So I'm gonna hold a lot of stuff back until I get to my conservative take where I actually invoke spoilers. So I won't touch on that. But ultimately the story is about these girls trying to figure out their way through life at a time when it's very difficult for women to make their way. And the main character again is through the eyes of Joe, And she is a very strong personality. She has a lot of people, men who want to be with her, court her. And in fact, a lot of the girls have that and they're dealing with what should, the, what should they do? Should they marry these people? Should they date them or should they go with them because they have money and can take care of them? And according to my research for this particular review, Louisa May Alcott, who wrote the book, basically was trying to do a novel that was based on the fact that, you know, back then, it's a situation where women just couldn't do the things they wanted to do. So in literature, it was all a cookie cutter scenario where they fall in love, they get married and whatever happens is it's always a that sort of thing. And it's Joe, who was the writer, came into a producer or a publisher and showed him some work of hers. And he basically cut it up and said, look, you know, I don't like this. You have to come back and give me something more juicy. And so that's kind of the thing. And that was in the book. And that's also what happened with Louisa May Alcott in real life. And so the film has a lot of intricacies in it. There's a lot of different things going on, a lot of subtleties, a lot of plot lines. It's really intricate and a lot of surprises too. So my score for story, because of what it is, the source material being what it is, the screenplay being awesome, I'm going to give this story a 10. Straight up, a 10. I'm not sure how you can write a better story than this. It's been around since forever and there it is. Okay, for the category of emotional impact, I'm going to give Little Women a 9. I thought it was pretty good. I was moved and on several occasions it had a special tug with me and so I have to give it that because it was touching. The interaction that these women have with each other and the love for each other 
regardless of what they do to each other, is really, really outstanding and it was really refreshing to see, especially what we see nowadays on TV and the movies. So for the category of intangibles, I'm going to give this film an 8. Mainly because the source material is so good, the dialogue is so good, I like the acting, it was great, of course, it's an Oscar film, you're going to have that. The way it's shot is great, it's, it's softly lit, and you have big sweeping shots of outside during the 1800s, and they do scenes at Christmas time, and the music is really good, and so it just has all the little things it needs. And of course it has Meryl Streep, and she does a fantastic job, even though she's not in it that much, but... When she's on the screen, you got to pay attention because it's Meryl Streep. And I think Saoirse Ronan did a fantastic job. You really are really, really pulling for this girl. And you hope things work out for her at the end. And so that in and of itself, to me, is an intangible. When you care enough for the main character, even though that character may not do things you like. So I'm going to give it an 8. For the category of watchability, I'm going to give the film a 7. Well, because it's fairly long and it's a little bit hard to watch in terms of its continuity I got kind of lost here and there because there were so many characters in here and that was kind of off-putting but the story is so deep in terms of what these characters are trying to do and get across and there's so many different people coming in and out of their lives whether it be Timothy Chamelet's character his name is Laurie he's courting Joe and then he ends up doing other things too I won't say now until the spoiler section but you have other men coming in. You have producers and publishers coming in trying to help with this and that. You have benefactors who help with piano lessons and everything else. And so you have to really pay attention to it. But as it kicks in by the, I would say, second act, middle to the end of the second act, that's when things really pick up because you start to see the payoffs happening that was established early on in the film. So now we're on to my conservative take, so please be mindful of spoilers. I will say, full disclosure again, not knowing anything about this novel and thinking that this was going to be a 2019 man-bashing epic, that's what I thought, that that's what this was going to be. They're just going to come in here and treat men horribly on the screen. But that didn't happen. Actually, the men in this film were fairly positive, and I appreciated that. They weren't perfect, and I wouldn't expect them to be perfect at all. But at least is fair in the storytelling and even the publisher who initially took Joe's writings when she first came to him he basically said you know what this wasn't that good come back make it more scandalous and we can do something with it at the end of the film she comes back with a manuscript of about I don't know a few chapters and he rejects it and has a you know a joke about it and was like whatever get away come back with something more you know, scandalous. She goes away, but it's only because his daughters, the publisher's daughters, who actually read the stories and come to him and say, hey, daddy, why aren't you um, publishing this? What happened to the end of the story? That's what got him to agree to make the novel with Joe. And my next point is this, is that Joe did a really good job of negotiating the contract for the novel. She took the option of copyrights instead of the $500 as upfront to basically sell the rights to the book. She said, you know what? It would be nice for me to own a novel. And she did. And of course we know that novel became Little Women. Now, I don't know if the book has that in the book or is that just a situation with the novel? I don't know. But I found that pretty interesting because the story is actually within the story. So that's what I liked about it is that the women were not victims. And so I really liked the fact that women felt that they could achieve in the film, over and over and over again, you would hear, especially from Meryl Streep's character, Aunt March, that women just couldn't do anything at that time period to make any money outside of being in a brothel or something of that nature. But all of the girls had their own special abilities and own talents. Beth was great at piano. Amy was great at painting. And Joe was great at writing. And they were all really, really good. And But what Joe did was she took it to another level. So... There was no victimhood mentality, which to me resonates because in today's society, we see people who just are on their hands and knees saying, oh my goodness, you know, society's down on me. The man's down on me. Why can't I achieve? Well, you know what? Here in America, you can achieve. Now, other countries, maybe not so much, but here in America, we have so many opportunities. And this film 
let me know that women of this era had to go through so much and had to deal with so much. If they had money, they had to give money to their spouse if they got married. And if they didn't have money, they would have to be with someone who did have money, whether or not they loved each other. And so women had to balance, do I want to marry somebody because I love them? If they have money, that means I can go ahead and, and be secure. Or do I compromise that and go with someone who I love who may not be that well off? And that's a challenge that they had to do for themselves because their opportunities were limited. But so, again, this film showed a lot of self-assertiveness on the women to do for themselves and take the roles that they felt that they could do. One scene in here was that just because my goal is different than yours doesn't mean it's wrong. Just because I want to start a family and do this doesn't mean that I'm wrong. doesn't mean you're wrong either. It's just different. And that is something that I appreciate, something that a lot of people think, well, women have to be married or women have to be this way. And we have to come to the conclusion that women are women and they have their own likes and desires and values and interests and principles and so forth. And it's just different. And so that's why I think this movie is good. It doesn't shove that down your throat. It shows both sides of it and lets us watch that and appreciate each woman, each character for what they decide to do for themselves. And so I thought that was great. Getting back to the portion of emotional impact I want to talk about that I was going to mention before. There was a scene that was really touching and that was the fact that Beth, who had always been sickly, she passes away. And that was a, a really hard scene to watch because you're thinking that one part of it, she's going to make it because as Joe gets up, she goes downstairs and she ends up, you know, she's Beth's okay and it's well lit. It's lit in a more orange type festive type setting or, uh, or lighting and in doing so you made it feel more uh, vibrant and happy. Also had a scene where the father came back from the civil war. It was a great time. They're all together again and they're eating. And, but that was just a dream. And so she wakes up and then she, the same scene this time is, is lit in a blue teal kind of grayish tone. And you realize from a viewer, Oh my goodness, this ain't going to be good. She goes downstairs. Next thing you know, Marmy, the mother is crying. So you know that Beth had passed away. So, that was a scene that was really touching. Another scene was when Amy falls through the ice after she burns the books of Joe out of anger. And so they were able to get past that. And I just think the relationships that they have with each other was just fantastic. So for my final rating, I'm going to give Little Women a 16.5, which translates to three and a half stars and a go for my conservative take. This film is an instant classic. I liked it a lot. It really is a throwback to films of a time that was not so political. And I really do like that. It was very, very refreshing on that note. They tried to put stuff in there that would kind of resonate to people of an audience of today. But because the source material is so strong, I just think they just wanted to keep it as much to the original as possible. And I really appreciate Greta, the director, for doing that. But the big question is this. What do you think? Did you see Little Women? Do you plan on seeing Little Women? And also, have you read the book? Or what do you know about the novel of this? I'd be curious to know what the differences are. And if you like the content on this channel, where I take culture, TV, and movies, and filter your rights, please click that like and subscribe button and that bell icon so you don't miss any future content. And as always, please check out some content that I have right here.